Uh, hi there, thanks for the invitation to speak at BCC. My name is Simon Ray, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Freiburg. Um, the project that I'm presenting is designing and executing workflows for virtual screening of the SARS-CoV-2 main proteins. Um, and it's a joint project between um, Fiona, Fiona Mee from the European Galaxy team and um, Tim from Informatics Matters. Um, so the work was also done in close collaboration with the Diamond Light Source, which is a um, synchrotron in the UK, as I'll um, describe shortly. So one of the first questions that needs to be answered is what actually is virtual screening? So very briefly, it's a computational technique for um, identifying um, chemical structures which are promising drug candidates. And the rationale is effectively that there's a huge number of available compounds in the chemical space. One number that's often quoted is 10 to the power of 60. So some kind of in silico filtering is useful to select um, a certain number of compounds which can then be um, synthesized and tested either in vitro or later in vivo. Um, there are various different methods which I won't go into in detail which have varying accuracies and um, computational costs like um, molecular docking, molecular dynamics, uh, QSAR which is essentially a statistical approach and because there are multiple steps involved workflow management systems uh, can be very useful so one which is most often used is uh, NIME the implementation which I'm going to discuss here is um, done in Galaxy but uh, but I'm also aware of projects which are using CWL or Nextflow. The platform which we've created, which we used for carrying out this project, is called the Chemical Toolbox. It's um, essentially an, an implementation of some of the most widely used computational chemistry tools available into Galaxy. So including some basic cheminformatics tools using the open source toolkits, OpenBabel and Ollie Kit as well as um, various molecular docking software and tools for molecular dynamics using um, Gromax. Um, we have about 100 different tools in total and um, the Chemical Toolbox is available either as a web server via cheminformatics.usegalaxy.eu or it's also downloadable as a docker container which makes it convenient to run locally. Uh, we've created several different tutorials which provide introductions to uh, different aspects of computational chemistry, um, in particular molecular dynamics. We, we also have a tutorial which is an accompaniment to this project, so it allows users to repeat some of the workflows that we describe here on their own data or on smaller data sets. We have a reasonably sized um, community on Gitter, which is very active in developing new tools and workflows, so, so if you're interested in computational chemistry in Galaxy then um, you're very welcome to join us there. So that was a brief description of the Chemical Toolbox, which is the platform that we use to carry out the research for this project. So let's move on now to um, discussing the project itself, which is um, virtual screening of the um, SARS-CoV-2 um, main protease. So at, th at this point we know quite a bit about the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It has um, 30,000 base pairs, um, 29 different proteins, of which at least four are thought to be potentially druggable. The one which we focus on here is the main protease. Uh, the so-called main protease is a cysteine protease which the virus needs to cleave um, various essential proteins that it needs for its uh, life cycle. And um, it's quite similar to the um, enzyme of the original SARS virus, um, which was studied in detail um, several years ago. Um, at that point, there were no molecules found, unfortunately, which were potent enough to inhibit the enzyme. Um, but obviously, it's the focus of um, very extensive um, research currently, uh, much of which, including the work that I'm describing here, is happening under the umbrella of the so-called uh, COVID Moonshot Project. So the idea behind this, effectively, is to um, crowdsource both, um, both funds and ideas for potential inhibitors um, which can be submitted to, to, to the website um, linked in, on the slide. Then the idea is that the most promising of these um, structures uh, can be purchased for uh, in vitro testing. So the virtual screening workflow which we created is based on some really incredible um, experimental work performed by two research groups at the Diamond Light Source. 
uh, which is a synchrotron in the UK. So it's based on um, fragment screening, which is a high throughput technique for collecting um, X-ray crystal structures of um, a protein in complex with various different um, fragments. So um, fragments are basically um, small organic compounds which don't bind very tightly, but um, but provide an indication of what kind of compounds are likely to bind to, to the protein. And as you can see, this work was done at a really incredible pace. Um, so within a period of a month, the protein was um, expressed, um, um, the X-ray structure was solved, and um, uh, almost 80 different um, structures of the protein in complex with different fragments were made available. And um, as a result, we were able to start um, our first um, virtual screening workflows running um, at the beginning of March. So on the left-hand side of this slide, you can see a schematic of the of the workflow that we used. Um, it has four different main stages. So first of all, the preparation of the ligands for screening, um, the preparation of the of the protein. Um, the screening itself, which was done using um, molecular docking, and then finally um, scoring and validation of um, the uh, docked poses. And on the right is a link to um, our documentation, which is quite extensive. And if you're interested in the um, finer details of the workflow, then I'd encourage you to to, uh, to have a look at that. And just as a small disclaimer, the version of the workflow which I'm describing in this presentation and which is also described in the documentation is the um, first version of the workflow. So we've um, continued to work on developing it further um, but the version which I'm describing is the initial and most complete version. And the first stage in the workflow which I just described is ligand preparation. So we started with a library of around 42,000 structures which were derived from the uh, Fragment network. So this is a, um, a service which Diamond provides for uh, deriving compounds um, from a list of fragments, um, such that the compounds um, are structurally similar to the input fragments. Then once we have these 42,000 uh, structures, the next step is charge enumeration, so effectively to generate all possible charge forms of the structures between uh, uh, between the pH of 4.4 and um, 10.4. So this takes us up from 42,000 molecules to um, 159,000. Uh, finally, for each of these enumerated charge variants, we generate a three-dimensional confirmation. So initially, we just have a two-dimensional um, graph representation of the, of the molecule in SMILES format, and then we generate the three-dimensional representations using OpenBabel. Uh, the next step is protein preparation. We repeated the workflow for um, each of the protein structures which was generated um, from the fragment screening. So, for it, so in each case we um, removed ligands and water molecules from the PDB file and standardized it to ensure a constant pH, uh, leaving the active site residues um, in a neutral uh, ground state. Uh, now we come to the screening itself which was performed using the molecular docking software RDOC. Molecular docking is a very commonly used um, technique in computational chemistry which um, predicts the um, preferred uh, orientation or um, binding pose of a ligand in complex with a protein or another macromolecule. Um, so in this case we used RDOC to produce 25 different docking po poses for each of the um, enumerated candidates so given that we had um, 159,000 candidates and an initial number of 17 protein structures with 25 poses each, this um, resulted in a total of almost 3 million docking jobs in the galaxy and then um, almost 70 million uh, docking poses. So this was definitely the most computationally expensive step. The final step in the workflow is to um, score the docking poses which we which we generate uh, using RDOC. Um, so while RDOC does um, provide docking scores alongside the generated poses, they're not thought 
um, of as being very good quality. So um, effectively, we like to think of the docking as providing um, uh, a list of hypothesized um, docking poses, and then we can um, use um, different scoring methods to test whether they're um, really of good quality or not. So the first of these is called um, TransFS. So this is a deep learning algorithm developed at um, the University of Oxford, which um, um, is actually the only step, step of the workflow which requires um, GPUs. And the second is SUCOS, which is a bit different from a traditional docking score in that um, it really performs validation of the, of, of, of the dock poses um, relative to, to the original experimental fragment hits. So what the SUCOS score is telling us effectively is whether the docked poses that, that we um, get from our dock are really consistent with the um, crystal structures that we originally got from the fragment screening. So now a short word regarding infrastructure. So the workflows that I just described were executed on a distributed um, infrastructure network of Galaxy servers um, uh, across Europe. These workflows were very compute intensive. We ended up using a total of around 25 CPU years, using resources um, provided by Denby, by the STFC, and by the University of Freiburg. In, in total, these resources amounted to about 10,000 CPUs, as well as 20 GPUs, which we needed for the TransFS step. And using Pulsar in this way allowed us to achieve a really huge volume of Galaxy jobs running concurrently. Um, as you can maybe see from the um, graph at the bottom of the screen. So um, the base level of um, the graph shows the sort of typical traffic on the um, usergalaxy.eu um, server, so on the order of hundreds of jobs, and then you suddenly see this, this peak jumping up to um, uh, thousands or even 10,000 jobs being executed uh, simultaneously. Um, so yes, um, this could really be um, an entire presentation in its own right, but um, thanks are definitely due to my colleague Jan Mauro, who did a lot of work on getting um, this infrastructure set up. So the aim of this slide is to give you an idea of uh, what it looked like to execute these workflows through the Galaxy interface. So like I mentioned earlier, um, the workflow was executed once for each of the um, original um, protein structures from the fragment screening. So each of the, of the histories in the top image um, represents one of the um, initial um, main protease um, fragment hit structures. And then at the bottom right you can see one of the protein visualization tools which was integrated into Galaxy as part of the chemical toolbox um, for viewing three-dimensional protein structures. So having collected such a massive amount of data, obviously a lot of work is still needed to filter and to, and to analyze the results. We're also working on um, improving the, the workflow further by using tethered docking to ensure that the docking poses are based closely on the um, positions of the fragments in the, frag in the, in the fragment structures, um, as well as extension of the workflow to more advanced molecular dynamics based techniques, and um, eventually hopefully to create um, more generic workflows which, which can be applied to various other fragment screening targets, not only the SARS-CoV-2 main protease. So that brings this presentation to an end. Many thanks for your attention and um, thanks also to everyone who is involved in this project in some way. Um, so to everyone at the um, Diamond Light Source and, um, and in Oxford, um, to all my colleagues in the European Galaxy team um, and Tim's colleagues at Informatics Matters um, and big thanks also to all members of the Galaxy Computational Chemistry community who weren't directly involved with this project but um, have contributed a lot of tools and workflows in the past. And many thanks also to all the organizations who were involved or supported us in some way.